last video, we added a similar um, set of polynomials. We used the same strategies, uh, write, writing everything in terms of addition to help out, and then combining like terms. And in fact, a, a short way to think about this is that I, I could just cross these parentheses out. Right? I don't even need them because all I'm doing is adding. So in fact, 3x to the third, I'm adding a negative 8x to the third to that. So I'm going to have 3x to the third plus, right, excuse me, plus this term right here. So plus negative 8x to the third power. Now I have 2x squared. There's nothing to add it to over here, so I'm just going to rewrite that. 2x squared. And here, negative 5x plus positive 3x. So negative 5x, right, plus 3x. So these are my pairs that I'm looking at. Two, oops. Ooh, that, sorry about that. Okay. So I'm going to add this. Okay. So now I'm adding up these groups. So what's 3x cubed plus negative 8x eight, eight, eight cubed? Last video we talked about this, but here we have 3x cubes and negative 8x cubes. We could just add the 3 and the negative 8, and that's going to be our coefficient, which is 5x cubed. Right, this is 5 right here, 5x cubed. Plus, what's this? Well, that's still 2x to the second power. And here we're just going to add these coefficients, negative 5 and 3, which is what? Negative 5 and 3, which is negative 2. So it's negative 2x. We're adding negative 2x. I'm just going to write minus 2x, same thing. And I'm looking at my choices, the one that makes sense for me, almost circled D, but that's wrong, right? And in fact, I see a mistake. It's got to be C. But what did I do wrong? Well, I said this was 5. But it can't be 5 because 3 plus negative 8 is negative 5x cubed. So the answer is C, negative 5x cubed. And in case we're wondering why, right, if you're here at 3 and you add negative 8, you hop down uh, 8 units this way to negative 5. And I put positive 5. But, but this is a situation where we're adding two polynomials, right? The sign is to add, and we're adding two polynomials. What do we do here? Well, here we're subtracting two polynomials. And there's, there's two ways that I like to think about, well, let's say three ways I like to think about this, and there are others, of course. One way that I find is actually particularly easy to think about this is to stack them up like this. So you have 3a squared plus 5a minus 11. And what you do is you're subtracting what? This stuff here. So just like you would write, right, so for example, 55 minus, I don't know, or 550 minus 27. What you do is you're subtracting 27 from 550, so you line up the units, the tens, places, and the hundreds. Same thing here, except we have like terms. So I'm going to line this up with this term. So it's taking away 11a to the second power. And then we're taking away what? Well, we're taking away positive 2a. And then we're taking away negative 12. And then you can figure it out this way by pairing up the terms. We'll come back to that one. Another way of thinking about it is that, well, we could just say it, right? We're going to pair up this way, 3a squared minus 11a squared. And you could write this out, 3a squared minus 11a squared. And then we have 5a, 5a minus 2a, minus 2a. And then we have negative 11, right? Think of this as a negative 11, and if you're stuck on why or when to do that, start off these problems by writing everything in terms of addition. It would be easier to see. So you have 3a squared plus 5a plus a negative 11, right? That's the same thing as subtracting 11. So that, when you rewrite it like this, it's easier to see that we do have a negative 11 here. But you can see it here as well. This sign is attached to this number, so we have to keep it with it. So we have negative 11 minus, well, and the same reason here, this is attached to this number, minus a negative 12. And then you can figure out all these parts and bring them back together. We'll come back to that one. A third way of thinking about it, and this is actually also pretty efficient. So we'll write this out, 3a squared plus 5a minus 11. Minus, now, you can think of this as minus, well, I said, I'm sorry, I said in the, f the previous videos, rewrite everything in terms of addition. So we could say that subtracting this polynomial is the same thing as adding, 
right, a negative polynomial. So you can think of it as negative 1. Right? So adding negative 1 times 11a squared plus 2a minus 12. And this helps you think about it because what's going to happen is, and all I did, I haven't changed anything yet. I just said that subtracting this polynomial is the same thing as adding its negative. And I put a negative 1 out here to distribute the negative sign. If you remember the distributive property, it says that, look, take this, this value right here, so negative 1, and multiply it by all three parts inside. So we have negative 1 times 11a, negative 1 times 2a, and negative 1 times negative 12. And that will help us, because what we get next is, well, we write this, 3a squared plus 5a minus 11 plus negative 11a squared, right? I distributed that that negative 1. And then negative 1 times 2a is what? That's negative 2a. I'm going to add that as well. I'm always going to try and add. And then negative 1 times negative 12 is, well, positive 12. So I'm going to add 12. And what I've done now is I have everything in terms of addition. So I can just start grouping these terms to solve. So we've got three ways of solving it. Stacking it, uh, breaking it into pieces over here, and then rewriting the subtraction of two polynomials as the addition of a negative and distributing that value. So let's look at, before we say which one we like, let's look at these three strategies and how it actually solves it. So let's go back to the first one, stacking. Well, 3a squared minus 11a squared, um, we have two terms, like coefficients, so I can just think of 3 minus 11, which is negative 8, and leave that a squared in there. And then 5 minus 2a, so 5 minus 2 is, right, we're adding 3a. And then this is where it gets a little tricky. Negative 11 minus negative 12, and that's just what? Well, that's 1, right? Um, if you think about it, right, here's negative 11. You're subtracting a negative 12, so you're adding 12. That's going to bring you up, well, here's 11 to 0, and then 1 more. So it brings you to positive 1. So I, the answer here is A. Now solving it another way here, and this is, I think this is usually the way I do it. Uh, I say, well, look, we have 3A squared here minus 11A squared. That's negative 8A squared. And then 5A minus 2A is 3A. And then negative 11 minus negative 12 is positive 1. And then I say, well, here my, my term is going to be negative 8a squared plus 3a, because I know I'm going to add these terms up. I have to bring them back together. Negative 8a squared plus 3a plus 1. And I get the same thing as I did here. So this, this works, right? Now in this case, once you get through all this of saying, well, instead of subtracting the second polynomial, I'm going to think of it as adding its negative and then distribute the negative 1. We have an easy way to combine terms because we're just adding. So we're adding 3 plus negative 11a, which is negative 8, 3a squared plus negative 11a squared, which is negative 8a squared, and then 5a plus negative 2a, which is 3a, and then negative 11. And see, this is why it's helpful because you see the minus 11 right there, plus 12. And notice that say does that little nasty step from before of negative 11 minus negative 12. So you have negative 11 plus 12, a little bit easier to think about, and that's just 1. So all three methods work. I hope one of these helped you. I hope it didn't overwhelm you. All right, thanks.